Assalamu alaikum Dear students, today we are going to talk about the process of communication In the same topic, we will discuss the components of communication and the process of communication is also called the cycle of communication So let's start with the lecture By the end of the lecture, we will try to learn that how this process of communication works so bismillah marking first uh, we can say that communication is not a static kind of process as we have already discussed in the previous lectures the process of communication is a dynamic process so here what actually happens uh, we have already discussed there are two pivots like sender and receiver this is a two-way process not a one-way process and in our first lecture we'll also discuss the different sets of senders and receivers and accordingly our communication and our communication strategies are built so now the ideas are conceptualized by the senders and we have discussed about the ideas these are the building blocks of communication and then these are transmitted to the receiver message is made and a channel is used then there's a feedback from the receiver and then this process completes so what are the basically six major components of this communication process they're like this one number one is context or stimuli second is sender and we do also call encoder third one is message fourth one is medium fifth is receiver or decoder and sixth one is feedback so let me introduce all these components one by one so number one is the context context and stimuli here we have used both of them in the communication skills or in communication as a cover terms if you look we look at the meaning of the these two words that is not the same if you try to find out whether these are the synonym words or not you won't find them as a synonym but as a cover term we use both of them why do we use both of them basically both of these things uh, sometimes we may call it stimuli sometimes we may call it context they serve as the basic plan or we can say a kind of background for any communication so in this situation we can call context as a situation although there is a lot of importance of context in the communication sometime this is not only the situation but can context itself communicates but here what we are talking about we are talking about communication cycle communication process and we are taking context as one of its very basic component so we may call this is a kind of situation or context is a background for comprehension what makes communication possible so how context and stimuli are same in this communication process a stimuli is something causes reaction in a plan or a part of the body it creates need to communicate and hence there must be a stimulus for communication to take place this stimulus may be internal or external we will discuss next about the internal or external stimulus so how do context and stimuli are used as cover term basically whenever there is a sender and the sender first of all he thinks about say something or he makes a plan or whatever he thinks whatever the plan or whatever the events are he want to communicate or whatever the situation is sometimes situation these are stimulates us so you know stimuli is from stimulate stimulate is basically activating something so the urge of communication whether through context or situation or whether through any other mean by uh, which we can call as stimuli so basically this is the force that pushes the sender to start communication 
so whether this is the situation or context whether this is any other event so in both these situations this is the basic pusher of communication or communication we can say initiator of communication process so that's why we have used context and stimula as a cover term and we are using both of them as the first element of the process of communication so whether this is context or stimula basically their function is initiating the communication or sparkling the internal urge of the sender to send the message so that's why we can call we use them as a cover term and this is the first and very basic point of communication process so that's why this is the first basic component so there may be two kind of stimulus one is internal or second is external internal is probably we have an internal urge to communicate we are thinking about something and we feel that we would like to share it with the world otherwise it will be an abstract thing in our, our mind so this internal urge is internal stimuli which pushes the sender to send the message and start communication external stimulus mean any external event if for, for example you are standing by this roadside and suddenly you witness an accident so any kind of accident it is probably a car hit a truck or a truck strikes a bike whatsoever it is but you have seen some kind of urgent situation over there now this event basically pushes you to start the communication so you immediately bring out your mobile phone from your back pocket and to help the injured and to control the situation you start communicating with the any kind of forces who can help out and who can control the situation so as you bring out the mobile and you start dialing the number and you start communication basically what is the thing which asks you to start the communication this was an external event of an accident so this was an external stimulus so this is how during the previous slides i was telling you slide i was telling you about the context of stimuli now that may be the context or situation but that is external stimulus as well so this is how the communication initiates or starts and this is the role of internal and external stimuli so this may be internal or this may be external stimulus so now moving ahead towards the second important component of the communication is called the sender simple if we call it simply the sender is the person who is sending the message like now i am recording this lecture for you so basically i am the sender so sender is also called encoder now why what's the reason because earlier on in the basic kinds of communication about verbal and non-verbal we have learned that communication may take place without language or with any language now at the moment i am really delivering this information to you this lecture to you and being a sender i am encoding all my message in english language so it depends on me i may write uh, or speak in urdu language or in any other language so now i feel that english language is more universal and more audience and the more people can understand this lecture and particularly this course is related to english so that's why i'm communicating in english so for example being a sender if you want to ask any of your friend how are you so it's your choice whether you are writing how are you whether you are writing aap kaise hain whether you are writing aapka kya hal hai and whether whenever you are texting you are writing in short form so now however you are encoding the message whether you are sending this message as a voice message or as a written message so these all choices are the basically responsibility of the sender so that's why he is also called encoder it's up to him 
keeping in view his in his audience accordingly he can form his message so that's why sender is also called encoder then sender uh, sends a message what is the message basically message is basically the physical shape of the ideas now again link this thing with our previous lecture of the verbal and nonverbal communication where we find out that language the basic building blocks of the language were words and they were dependent on the ideas so as earlier on when i was talking about internal stimuli mean i'm i was saying that i have in my mind any idea that i want to share with you but unless i am giving it in the in the form of word any verbal way or non verbal way of communication it is not getting any physical shape so when it is getting the physical shape like i am writing down how are you and now all my this spoken message or spoken lecture you are getting it in a physical shape so when that idea is getting a physical shape that is called the message so message is basically the physical shape of the idea and we have discussed this thing thoroughly previous in the previous lectures so here i have written about the, the word and idea discussion that we have already made and uh, there may be visuals or sounds that may work so those visuals or sound may work as a message so then this message travels through the medium or channel for example now if you are watching this lecture by any medium of internet by any uh, by any other source or i am delivering this lecture you by by sharing this link by any other source so this is the medium or channel by which the message is being conveyed so message the physical shape of idea needs to travel sometime when we people are talking face to face so you may ask me what is the medium over there there is the direct medium of air because when they are speaking if there is no air you know being the students of the science your message cannot be conveyed from one person to the other so there is the physical shape of the sound but that travels through the air so that at that time even at that time air is the medium or channel so the choice of medium is also very important in the process of communication so through the medium or channel the message is sent to the receiver now receiver is simply the person who receives the message but why we are calling it him decoder as well so decoder is linked with the term that we have already used uh, with sender and that was encoder so definitely i being sender have sent this message in english language if you can't decode this message if i am speaking such a language it is not understandable for you then being encoder this is my fault and basically the message is being sent for decoding so if our receiver can't decode the message then the message is not be uh, has been conveyed so basically communication will take place when the recipient when the receiver of message will be able to decode the message so that's why the understanding of the message so if there is the understanding of the message and the receiver is decoding the message accurately then receiver is also decoder so i'd like to tell you another example for example if i'm calling someone and his mo his telephone is on recording and telephone asks me to record my message i do record that message the communication process will not take place and that receiver mobile phone or receiver phone will not be a receiver in a real sense uh, unless it delivers the message and uh, by that time it will be only a channel and when the person who i called he came back to his home and he listened that recorded message so now the telephone or telephone recorder is not are the receiver overall we generally we are calling it receiver but the receiver is that person who listened the message 
and why we are calling him the receiver in the real sense because he decoded the message he understood the message the machine which received the message and recorded it it was not able to uh, basically understand that message and reply to that message so that's why the basically decoder or receiver listen the message and then accordingly what he is trying to do he is trying to respond to the message now communication process will go on he will get the feedback or response to the sender so response of the receiver which goes back to the sender is called feedback and it is also called the response so these are basically the six elements the six basic components of communication then we need to know which of these component is crucial or important important as far as communication is concerned all these six elements are pivotal and they are very important for the communication if we take any of these out from the process then communication will not take place and then there is a sequential order organizational order in all these components if they are not in that order then communication process or communication cycle is not working so how why we are calling it communication cycle you can come to know it now by understanding this figure now first of all this context or stimuli that pushes this sender or encoder to send the message then sender encodes the message according to the need of communication and his receiver what he encodes the message then the message is being encoded and this message is sent to the sorry there is a problem in the figure this message is sent to the sent by the medium here here it is medium sorry let me tell you sent by the medium now this message goes towards the medium and then this medium or channel delivers this message to the receiver and then this receiver basically decodes the message he decodes it and he send it uh, and then he produces a feedback and that feedback goes back to the sender now this communication process will go on and on here context or stimuli is basically working like the main switch of any communication when this switch switch on this process or cycle of communication then this cycle of communication goes on and on and on the next instance feedback works as context or stimuli how it works as context or stimuli let me tell you for example first i feel that i should ask my friend how he is so i encodes the message i say him how are you so here the message is so here i encoded the message and the message is how are you i encoded it in this way how are you then this message to medium this message how are you goes then this message how are you goes to the receiver receiver gets this message and understand this how are you mean he want to know about my health so he gives the feedback and he says after decoding he says for example he says that i'm fine so now this i'm fine is basically this i am fine is uh we can say is the feedback and this feedback will go back to the sender and then he decodes the other message what's the plan let's go for a movie 
and then this process goes and on and on so first this urge started the communication then this feedback is working as a context for the sender or receiver and then this process goes on and on unless the feedback stops or the process completes so this is the complete communication cycle or process we also call it process we have discussed it as process and cycle when it starts and goes on and on this is cycle and if you take out any one of these elements let's say you take out this medium then there will be no communication because without medium the message will not be conveyed so that's why these all basic six components and elements are part and parcel of the communication cycle so that's it for today if you have any queries any questions you can ask me see you then take care allah hafiz